when we looked at ordered solids, we saw this beautiful picture of, of some salt crystals, <clears throat> and we we said that many solids are organized, the atoms are organized in some sort of a, a cubic arrangement. And that's that's the case for salt. So let, let's look at, at salt. Often it's actually called rock salt is the common name that's given to this structure we're going to cover. And as you may know, salt is uh, table salt or rock salt is made from sodium and chlorine. And something we noticed from the ratio or from the um, formula there is it's a one to one ratio of sodium to chlorine. So we have to keep that in mind when we start to build our structure and at the end of the day, make sure that there's the same number of sodiums as there are chlorines inside the unit cell. So what we can do is we can position atoms at the corners and I'm going to be as careful as I can to show this time the fraction of an atom at each corner. So I'm trying to show that at the corner is only one eighth of an atom inside the unit cell. And these are the chlorine atoms, although you'll see you could actually create the same structure later by reversing the positions of sodium and chlorine. It's, uh, it's equivalent, but uh, largely by convention, the chlorines are, are often or usually represented at the corners. So there's some atoms at the corners, um, but again, that's not all of them. There's also atoms on the center of each face. I'm going to actually draw in the back here. Uh, of the cube so we get the full three-dimensional picture. So there's also an atom uh, chlorine centered in each of the, uh, the face centered positions. So we have top, right side, front side, okay? And you gotta be paying attention here as careful as I am trying to be, it's gonna look messy. Back face, okay? Bottom face, left side face. So, and then uh, let me draw in that one on the back bottom left corner as well. So you can see those positions. You're probably fairly comfortable with that because you've already seen the positioning of atoms in aluminum. And so you may notice that this is similar. This seems to be uh, chlorine atoms in face-centered positions. And in fact, it is. It's not exactly face-centered. We'll cover that later. Um, but these atoms of chlorine are indeed in face-centered positions, so you can transfer that knowledge. You already know face-centered cubic. Consider the chlorine atoms in the same position. So now what we need to do is we need to position the same number of atoms uh, of, of sodium. And without even having to count, if you know face-centered cubic really well, and we know that there's um, that, that chlorine is in face-centered cubic, uh, face cubic positions, you know that there's four chlorines. So we need to position now four sodium atoms. And it turns out that they actually reside in these um, edge positions. So right on the center of each edge is a chlorine. And I'm not actually drawing the direction of contact between atoms yet. We'll cover that um, a little bit later. But in the center of each edge, so the, the front face, the top, the bottom, left, the right, the bottom there, and dash in these ones in the back, is um, a sodium atom in that back corner there. So there's there's 12 edges. And what fraction of a, of a sphere is represented there on the edge? Well, you've cut a, essentially a, a sphere into two planes. So you're left with quarters, little wedges of an orange, you could imagine, perhaps. So there's a quarter of an atom in each of those edge positions and let's just so let's just uh, tally that up. In the edges, there's one quarter, and how many edges are there? There's 12, so that gives us three. Uh oh, there's a problem. All right, there's only three there, and we know there needs to be four chlorines. And so the missing one is in the very, very center, right in the very center of this of this cube, floating out in the in the middle of the cube, is the the final. Uh, sodium atom. So now what we can do is we can go back to what we're really after here, which is the density. So what's the density of sodium chloride going to be? Well, it's going to be the number of sodium atoms times 
the atomic weight of sodium or the molar mass of sodium plus the number of chlorine atoms times the atomic weight of chlorine. That's how much the unit cell weighs. And then you've got the volume of the unit cell. And again, to make the units work out, we've got Avogadro's number because atomic weight is represented in, in moles. And that's not bad. Um, but we can generalize this a little bit further because we can realize that there's a ratio between the between the number of sodiums and the number of chlorines. And for this particular example, it's one to one. So what we could actually do is we could say, well, in order to form this unit cell here, in order to form this unit cell, if I you know, could go to the store and buy <coughs> formula, formulas of sodium chlorine, uh, sodium chloride, I could buy uh, one sphere of sodium and one sphere of chlorine, and they came in pairs like that. Well, how many pairs of sodium and chlorine would I have to buy or obtain to, to form this unit cell? And I think the answer should come to you fairly quickly when you realize, well, there's four chlorines. There has to be four sodiums. We worked that out. We know that there's four, um, four sodiums, four chlorines. So we could instead uh, of just using N sub A and, and N sub CL, um, we could be a little bit more general for any type of ceramic. And we could say, OK, the theoretical density is going to be some number, but the number has to represent the number of multiples of the formula. That's the formula. And in this case, it was 4. In the general case, we're just going to we can say it's n. We had n, though, for a metal. So let's call this n prime. So it's a different number. And that represents the number of multiples of the chemical formula that go into the unit cell. Then times the mass of the atoms in the formula. So that would be the sum of the atomic weights of element 1 plus the sum of the atomic weights of element 2 in the formula itself, in the chemical formula. In our case, sodium and chlorine is 1. And then divided by the volume of the unit cell and Avogadro's number. And that's a U and that's a C. They look like, I'm sorry, that's kind of messy. All right. So let's just summarize this equation here now and label everything. Again, that's Avogadro's number. OK, uh, that's the volume of the unit cell. This term in the parentheses here represents the mass or of the formula, the molar mass of the formula. And then this is the number of repeats of the formula. Sometimes this is called the number of, I've seen it called number of formula units. All right, in case you come across that. But it's the number of times you repeat the formula to create the unit cell.